Quarter past seven, well, our performance at the London Games has sparked debate over sports funding. About $170 million is spent on elite sport every year. That's not counting the Institute of Sport. And about $100 million of that has gone towards our Olympics campaign. So is more money the answer or is the real issue where and how we spend it? Let's check in with our Big Guns and Politics Environment Minister Tony Burke in Sydney, Shadow Treasurer Joe Hockey in Melbourne. Morning, gents. Um, Tony, do we need a complete overhaul of our sports funding? Look, I think it's always good, Koshi, to have a conversation about how you can get more people involved in sport. But I don't accept at all the basis of some of this conversation at the moment as though somehow our athletes have done a bad job over there. Um, we have been absolutely punching above our weight in London. You know, overnight, Brittany Broven, 16 years old, youngest member of the team, silver medal. You know, I, I spent a fair bit of time on a kayak watching the K4 last night. They're doing something completely different to anything that I've ever tried to do. I just don't see what's wrong right at the moment with just being incredibly proud of the fact that we've got some of the best people in the world competing over there. Yeah. Joe, I guess too when you talk about funding, the big balance is going to be finding out between going back to basics and spending it on sport in schools or spending it at the elite level. Uh, well, Mel, I've spent absolutely no time in a kayak, <laughs> but I agree with Tony uh, that uh, you know our, our athletes have done extremely well. Uh, you know, it, the solution to everything is not always more money. Uh, sometimes there are other solutions, and uh, we'll find out what they are, but $170 million a year on top of what is already spent with uh, the Sports Commission, on top of the amount of money that's spent on infrastructure, uh, stadiums and a range of other things, it's not always money. Sometimes there are other factors at play. Uh, we probably should spend a little bit more on coaches, to try and keep the best coaches or get even better coaches uh, if that's what's needed. But I just don't subscribe to this view that our athletes have let us down. They've done a great job and I don't subscribe to the view that more money is always going to solve a problem. OK. All right, let's move on. And the biggest boatload of asylum seekers in five years has been rescued in Australian waters. 211 refugees on board one vessel when it made a distress call on Wednesday. Tony, it's the largest number since Labor has been in power. Does the government need... What more can we do to break the deadlock on asylum seekers? Well, ever since that High Court decision came down, we need the Parliament to act to be able to take the sorts of measures that stop people putting their lives at risk at sea. Now, you know, I've got comments, Joe's got comments where we can throw blame at each other, but there's no doubt, no matter which way you look at it, when Parliament rose at the end, at the end of those uh, sittings, the Parliament itself failed in terms of delivering an outcome. We're going to get another chance in the next few weeks. It won't be long before we get the report from the committee that's been trying to find a way through. And I just think we've got to approach, from every different political view, these next parliamentary sittings on the basis that this needs to be fixed and that means we've got to find a way of working together. Joe, do we sit back and wait for this independent committee to find the solution? Look, it was fixed. The boat stopped. Uh, the government changed the rules. Now the boats are coming. Uh, go back to the formula that works. It's as simple as that. I mean, we can have committees, inquiries, uh, okay. you know, we can stand on our heads, we can do everything, but the bottom line is there was a formula. It worked. Uh, the government changed it. Now we want them to go back to the formula that worked. Okay. Seems pretty simple, Tony. Well, ever since the High Court, the, the high court rule that came down, the, that ruling when it came down, what was that last year, that changed and meant that even what the Howard government had previously done would no longer be legal. So we need the Parliament to act, and unless we can find a way of working together, we're caught in a deadlock which, okay. which just sees all these challenges get worse. Well, it was, mate, to be fair, and I'm trying to be fair to you here, it was Kevin Rudd that changed the rules. He was the one that changed the rules, got rid of temporary protection visas and so on. So it was Kevin Rudd that got, uh, got us into this mess, and the government doesn't know how to get us out of it, and we've okay. offered a solution. Pick All right. It up. OK, guys, thank you for that. Any Good time. To see, you. see you next week. See ya. See ya. Have a good day. All right, now, driving...